Welcome to the second of Quick Frames tutorials. In the last tutorial, we used the analysis only version of Quick Frame to input this frame and look at the actual shear and bending moment diagrams. Let's unlock the design features of Quick Frame. On the Help menu, we select Purchase Design Modules, apply for a 28 day trial and enter the dealer supplied code. OK, the new features have been unlocked. <clears throat> um, if we want to see what we are, we can click here and we get this useful help text. There's comprehensive help text right throughout QuickFrame. Very useful, very good. Close that and close. Now straight away we can see that we have a new restraints tab. And so let's go and start to do some actual design work on this frame. So we can reach the options most quickly by clicking on the Quicksoft icon here. First of all, we're going to run the load cases and combinations wizard. Now the load combinations are quite difficult to set up, particularly for Eurocode. So this wizard will lead us through it. So we'll select this option. We get an introductory form. The wizard will create a suitable load cases and combinations for all design methods. Click Next. The frame contains loads. These will be retained along with the load cases. Next. This is listing the load cases and some of the Euro code values, which are suitable defaults. Next. Now these are our factors for Eurocode. Now we can look up the factors. It's got inbuilt factors for UK National Annex, uh, for agricultural buildings, class one and class two, and also for Singapore. Click, we're, we're going to select UK National Annex. Now for any of the other um, countries National Annex, we would just type in the values. I have reviewed these factors and they are correct. Select that box. Next. We're going to use the simplest form, equation 6.1. Next. Now we didn't input any snow loads, so we're going to just combine the imposed and the wind. And we're going to remove any duplicate combinations. Next. It's got all the necessary information, so we just click Create Now. Next, we can review the combinations. So these are the other type of combination, which would be kind of be used if you were doing concrete or some other uh, material analysis only. These are the Eurocode combinations, which it's set up. Still to BS5950 and Timber BS5268. And what Quick Frame does is it actually creates sets of combinations for each type of design method. Click OK and finish. <clears throat> OK, so now if we look at the bend a moment diagram, we can see that this is dead plus imposed. If we click on it, we can see it's other. These are Eurocode combinations. These are still BS5950 combinations. And these are these are what you would use if it were a timber design. So let's pop it back to Eurocode. OK, let's return to this button up here, Quick Soft. And we're going to run what's called the Restraint Wizard. This wizard automates the task of adding member restraints. Next. Bit of blurb here telling us what the restraint situation is at the moment. Next, delete all existing restraints and start over. Yes. Next, set trust defaults. So basically, what the program is going to do is it's going to look at the situation with the loading on the frame and the internal members that are coming in, and it's going to try and work out a suitable restraint system. So I'm going to accept this trust defaults and click Next. Now we're going to add the restraints, click Next, and finish.
Now if we look on the restraints tab we can actually see the restraints. So there's a continuous restraint on the top flange, on the top boom, and we can see rest discrete restraints on these nodes. So what we can do is we make sure that this is down. We can then select the restraint. We can right click and look at the restraint properties. Look at the design tab and we can see what type of restraint this is and we can see it gives lateral restraint to the top flange. We can see that in terms of actual restraint it is just out of plane. And under this, we can see that the factors for in-plane and out-of-plane buckling are both set to 1, which is probably correct. In fact, it is correct. So that's the restraints added. Um, we can also actually add any restraint system we want, so we can carry on and we can add additional restraints to this if we wish, or we could delete any of these restraints. So the restraint wizard is just a very quick way of initially creating a restraint system. And it usually gets it right. Okay, so back to the Quicksoft icon, and we will run the design wizard. And this will size all members for each ultimate limit state combination. Start the wizard. Now this frame's got no timber members but we're going to check the still work in accordance with Eurocode 3. If there were timber it would be checked in accordance to Eurocode 5. Next. There's rather a lot of combinations here and we haven't got any notional loads so we'll take those off. We haven't got any snow loads so we'll take those off. There's no wind, so we're going to take rather a lot of these away. Oops. So in fact, that leaves us with just dead and posed. Next. And similar for the timber. Next. The section groups already have sections selected. Use the current sections or start over. I'm going to select new sections. Next. Okay, these are the section groups. Now, remember we've got named section groups. This makes it very easy to understand. Top boom, bottom boom, internal. Now, it's going to consider the section types which it's taken from the current selection. Um, and that's perfectly reasonable. So for the top boom, bottom boom, we've got UC, and for the internals, we've got cold formed SHS. Next. Design Wizard now has the necessary information. Design now. It's pretty quick. Next. So these are the sections that Design has come up with. Interestingly, the top and bottom boom are exactly the same size. As they were. Um, the size of the internals is dropped slightly, probably from a detail point of view you wouldn't want to do that, but um, that's what the design has done. Okay, so we can actually view the checks instantly. We've got a summary table here giving us all the unity factors. And if we scroll down we can see real detailed checks. Close. Next. Finish. Now the other thing we could do if we wish is we could finally run a check if we were actually inputting our own sections and obviously we wouldn't be running the design we would just do a check. Next. 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 Check now. Next few calculations. So that's what it feels like to use QuickFrame for doing a still design. And we've got a good range of different section shapes here, a fantastic range actually. Next, finish. Let's have a look at the bend a moment. Now that we've got design turned on, we can actually select this member 
and right click and look at member results. And we see this form. We can drag this larger. These are the details of this particular member that's selected. These are the forces, deflections, diagrams for just that member, and most importantly, calculations. So these are the calculations for just this one member for the current combination. We could click here and change the combination. This would instantly update. And we click on each member and these calculations change instantly. So we can drill down and we can find out an awful lot about this frame. If a member's failing, we can look at the actual calculations to figure out why it's changing. There's a few things we can do here. We've got this spectacle form. We can change the amount of output that's in this calculation. So we could decide that in the detail calculations, we want to show all results or just those within 80% of the worst. It's currently set to worst, or we can turn them off. This tab specific to Eurocode, we can ask it to include calculations for the elastic critical load factor and calculations for the rather nasty KIJ factors, which are used in the combined buckling checks for Eurocode. We'll leave them as they are. OK, so that gives you some insight into just how simple it is to perform quick frames design. I'm just going to mention one thing, actually. When we input this member, we input it as a single member from the eaves to the apex. Most analysis programs, you just cannot do that. Quick frame internally will split this member, has split this member. But what this means is that design is very much simpler because this is treated as a single member. When we look at the results for this member, we are looking at it as a single member, not as a series of elements between the nodes. That's one of QuickFrame's really simple, powerful features. OK, I think that concludes this second tutorial. Thank you for listening.